skin is crawling suddenly. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's happening. Whoa. Did you see all the creatures just disappear from here? Oh my god, it's the Phasmid! Look. Oh. My. God. Oh my god. A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb. To then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. Look at it. Look at it there. Oh. Blink. It's still there. An unfolding mechanism of reed-like chitin hovering in place. I'm so pissed that we missed that 72 percenter because then we would have heard the phasmid. What is that? What are you talking about? The giant stick insect. There's nothing there. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. Oh my god. So awesome. Wow, look at the profile photo. Wow. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand move to your holster to grab the gun. Why would we shoot it? There is. I see it. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kuno, can you see it? Yeah, I can fucking see it. Thank God. If he can see, then maybe you're not insane. Look at it moving around. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. But that means it's really there, spinning slowly in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very careful. Kid whispers, then takes a step toward the giant arthropod. Oh my god. Oh my god, look, there it is. There it is. We can zoom out. We can see the whole thing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. We're going to try to walk over to it. Don't go anywhere, Phasmid. The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Oh my god, Lena would be so excited right now. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. Oh, well, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful description. We could say these other things, but instead we're going to go straight to electrochemistry where we have a 97% chance. We're going to approach it carefully. We did it. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. I can't tell you how excited I am right now that this phasmid thing, I knew it had to be in the game somewhere. This is, I had given up though. It told us, give up. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds and its eyes are like small droplets of water. And let's also think about it. This thing is three meters tall and and Lena and I don't remember her husband's name and Gary were trying to trap it in those stupid little small phasmid traps. I'm going to look behind myself. It's smelling me. This is so sick. It, it likes you. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue expanding like lunglets. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. I'm going to raise my hand slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. 
Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. No, stop. Be afraid. Oh, I'm not going to be afraid. We're going to raise the other hand, too. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white, like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you. If we die here, I don't mind. Praying to you. Don't pray to me. I'm nothing. The reed creature does not stop its stridulations. It towers above you, parting the reeds it emerged from. Tuft-like structures still rustle on its joints. Perhaps it is preparing to eat its god. Maybe so. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Let's stand on our tiptoes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. I wonder if it'll dissolve us and eat us. Kuno, it's foaming. Whoa! Maybe it's poison? Fucking hell! The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one. We have a 97% chance. Let's do it. Look at this. We spoke, we got plus one for speaking to the hangman, plus one for we know of parthenogenesis, and plus two because we did not give up on the phasmid. And it's true, I never did. Tell me, what are you doing? I exist. I exist too. Tell me what is life for you. If I tell you, what will happen? Then I will tell you what is life for me. I'm ill. What is your illness? In my heart, for me, it's sadness, input after input. For me, it is not like that. I have states, not the emotions. For example, I experience excitement and unexpected sugar rewards, but that is not important. Now I will tell you how it is for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit images, a kind of darkness being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist. I think she's communicating with us through pheromones. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations, a swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an era funnel, weightless, so light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache. Oh, I don't know if that's true. So our three choices are, you're the type of animal I would like to be, I'm glad to be me, an incredibly sensitive instrument, or the fuck is happening to me right now? I think he longs to be anybody but himself. So let's say you're the type of animal I would like to be. Are you sure? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Why do I think that this is going to be a point of no return? Let's try it. Let's just see. Yes, I'm sure. Why do you ask? Sometimes, when molting, I will grow a lost limb. One time something went wrong, and a small leg replaced a missing antenna. That's cool. No, the leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. You don't have a foot there now. Yes. Thankfully, someone ate it. The next time I molded, I grew an antenna again. Is this a dream? What is happening? No. You're awake. I am real. 
light is forming me. This is real. What exactly are you? I am an all-known species of the Order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insolindia Isuma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molding, cloning myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. Wow. It may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics, that help it maintain its camouflage. It may at that. No one unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Susserin. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. It seems like a very well-educated and well-spoken cryptid. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolshaw, district of Martinez, March 51. Wait a second, I'm a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? The killer. He's in a bad state, deteriorating fast now. He thinks I am beneficial to him, but I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. You're destroying him? Very slowly, and only because he won't go away. It is meant to keep them from noticing me, to interfere with the pictures in their heads. But he has looked at me for too long, and I am destroying him. Where does this come from, all this, around us? The world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. Then all we can do is beat our fists against it, day after day, with no answer? You can also eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Yum yum. Or read. <laughs> Are you poisonous? Yes. I do not have a star to display. So I use a newer degenerative element to aid in camouflage. Do not worry. It is only destructive over long periods of time. Ah, uh, and that's why it's killing Mr. Dross, I guess. The deserter. He's been here for a long time. Let's say that's insane, I guess. Why would we say that? I, I want to say it because it's the last thing we can say before we have to say goodbye. But no, he wouldn't say that. Ugh. I'm going to have to go with the character. I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. No, there is one more. Ah, we can say no, there are no more thoughts, or of all the creatures I met, you're the kindest, or of all the creatures I met, you're the scariest, or the most beautiful. I think it's both the scariest and the most beautiful. Let's say the most beautiful. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. What woman? You cannot lie to me. Behind you, he smells of fires. So awfully far, he will prepare to go in her presence. And it. Well, he can't just say, I will try, because it's do or do not. There is no try, as a sagacious philosopher once said. I will. This will be, this will be Superstar's moment to really work his way out of it. He will move on. He'll do it for the working class. He'll move forward. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. <laughs> okay. Let's disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. That was... So unbelievably cool. Oh, sh I'm going to shush. It, it ran and away. Just like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. What an unbelievable interlude. And something under it. In the place it stood, Bob in there, among the reeds, a collection of items. 
It's gone. Between those reeds there. Fucking hell, I can... What's that in the water? The fuck? Is that ceramic? And more stuff? Like a nest in the reeds? We should peep it. Fucking hell. Wow, is it the final piece of the armor? What now? What now? He puts his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Yeah, Grandpa's not looking so good. We need to check on him. Yeah, we sure do. But first, let's inspect this crap. Fairweather T500 helmet. Plus one half light, minus one suggestion. Oh, we got a thought. Brother, you've managed to collect all the armor pieces. Too bad it's too late for the big showdown. Don't think this helmet would have helped me anyway. Looking down at our wound. It would have looked very impressive. Still, you found it all. Now your mortal coil is completely protected. Few cops are this futuristic. That's cool. We also got a trophy for it. At least now, I am truly invincible. Hold on. Let's take... What's this thing? This is a T932 rifle scope. Oh, it's the scope maybe for the Tryon Gong. Okay, let's look at those items. How many points do we have now? We spent one and we still have... What is that? Eight. Because we just got so much experience. Okay, let's look at the items that we got. Uh, so here's the scope. T932 rifle scope. It's worth 30 real. A common 30 millimeter sniper scope attachable to almost any bolt action 446 caliber. It uses an older style non-dotted range finding reticle. Seaweed is still stuck on the lens and it suffered water damage from its time in the Fadsman's dowry. What a great term. And let's go look at the helmet. There it is. Fairweather T500 helmet. Plus one half light, head as a battering ram. Minus one suggestion, a fighter, not a lover. This monstrous looking bug-eyed ceramic helmet was in the Fasman's nest. It still has some reeds sticking out of it and it smells of seawater, but it's otherwise wearable, if not exactly comfortable. Putting it on feels scary somehow, which we're gonna do after this. And this is, this is actually what the sniper that we shot or that Kim shot was wearing. It's really a scary looking helmet. It looks sort of like the Tin Man though. Oh, okay, inspect the Phasmid. Phasmid's gone, check up on the deserter now. Oh, that's, okay, that's a task. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. Sir, how could you not see the Phasmid? See? He stares at the reeds and falls silent. Mr. Dross? The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets, his gap-toothed mouth shaking with fear and longing. We're going to touch his shoulder gently because even a murderer deserves tenderness. The plastic cape feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. The boy waves his hand in front of the old man's face. The trembling mouth appears to sigh. There's no other response. Are we just going to watch him die here? Yeah, this fried him. we got to bring him to a doctor. Good news, this solves our boat and piggy's problem. He's not going anywhere. He's trapped here. That's true. What happened to you, Mr. Dross? He's old and fried. Kuno's seen this, like, after a massive bender. Kuno's dad. He stops mid-sentence. I think it's the Phasmid. Yeah, and then there's that shit. Gramps couldn't take it. It was too much. I understand that. There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. Quite a few things about that health check you did on him make sense now. Could it be there's something hormonal in his relationship to the Phasmid? You mean like horny? Yeah, he seemed a little off for a man his age. I mean, he was pairing on that Clasier party lady weirdly hard. Yeah, maybe... You know, he couldn't see it, Kuno. It was just reeds for him. How? Like, it's pretty fucking huge. How? He says, nudging the man gently. No response. Maybe this is how the Phasmid has stayed hidden all these years? Then how the fuck did we see it? Oh, oh wait. The longer it's there, like it needs time to sink in. And if you spend time with it. You forget it's there. Yo, 
You ever seen a giant fucking insect? He says that to the old man prodding him. The, the... Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. Yeah, Kuno knows hobos, and Kuno has never seen a hobo sharp like this after so many years of hoboing. <laughs> You're the hobo expert. You're the hobo cop? No, that would have been a different superstar. Or a different Harry. Perhaps this animation is induced by something in the phasmid? Yeah, yeah. Because look at him now. Not so sharp, is he? And it's gone. Left. Perhaps it's like... Kept him going. Like the drink and the lightning keep my old man. Yeah, could be. I talked to the phasmid. It said it's destroying him. Talked, huh? You sure it didn't have a strange effect on you? You looked like hypnotized maybe anyway it's only trying to remain unseen the degradation is a side effect yeah man i don't know i don't know what degradation means and i don't know about getting close to it like that and staring at it for five minutes you're one crazy cop we sure are we sure are and it's about time you realized it kuno mr dross has been here for a long time who knows how much of it in the phasman's company yeah yeah you see that too got a little jumpy there didn't you i know that vibe i'm off me lightning too we found some things in the Phasmid's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should. Let's show him the detached scope. I... I lost. You lost it, Mr. Dross? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. Uh-huh. Hey! Hey! You took the shot, bang, and got rid of the evidence. Bug brought it back. Sound about right. Does to me. Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor being. Yeah, there's no reason to show him the helmet either. I'm gonna let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. All right, hang tight, Mr. Dross. We'll be back. Yeah, old man. Hang tight. Let's slowly start shuffling off Death Island, okay? We're about done here. He looks over to the Flak Tower. So we got a new task. It's the return. We need to use the boat to return to the mainland, so hopefully we didn't need to use that fuel. Oh, that would be pretty, pretty bad. We're going to head back to the mainland. And we'll leave Yosef here. Mr. Dross. Where is that entrance? Come on, folks. Here we go. Got myself backed into a corner. That phasmid was pretty cool. I really, really had given up hope. I actually didn't even realize how excited I was going to be. Like, how, how frustrated I was that it wasn't going to happen in this playthrough. So we're going to head to the boat, and then we will go back to the mainland and see what happens. It's very loud in here now. Oh, what jacket are we wearing? Wait a minute, what jacket are we wearing? Okay, I put our Anorak uh, and Mazovian, our Anorak jacket and Mazovian hat back on. Okay, let's go, Kuno. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Oh yeah, we did good shit here, Detective. Thank you, Detective Kuno. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet, but for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Well, we're going to find out who that someone is next time as we proceed inexorably to the end of Disco Elysium. Thank you so much for your viewership. I love you very much. Please remember to have your pets spayed or neutered. <laughs>